Anyway, how did we get here? How we got here? There's two versions, the optimistic version. I want you to know where you are. The optimistic version is that you are experiencing a Besmanov style. A Besmanov style has four stages. It's how you take over a country without a firing bullet. It's demoralization. You demoralize somebody so they're weak. You disorient them so they don't know which end is up. You force some crisis down their throat. And then you normalize it. You create this situation where the world is so psychotic, you force the crisis down their throat, and you, heart, you harness the natural human desire to step away from psychosis to accept this new reality you just created. And it's a four-stage process. See if this rings a bell. COVID. I used to have to explain to people, <laughs> here's a great, Naomi Wolf wrote a great single book that explains the whole COVID drop. This is a crime against humanity beyond World War II. What's going on with COVID? I can spend a bunch of time on it. I will point out the Cleveland Heart Institute has now released data that shows they've got employees, perfect scrutiny. The more COVID shots you get, the more COVID you get. And we've learned that it's not safe. We learned all kinds of lies. And by the way, I've, DARPA has released that in their study that shows in 2006, CDC and FDA knew that ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine work on the SARS-1. So this whole thing has been a charade. Disorientation, that was the anti for the BLM stuff. And just so you know it, just like we know, I think that the J6ers were set up I think that the B, some of the BLM riots were set up. There were, there were agent provocateur, provocateurs working at just like they did with J6. And there were vi very strange videos of crowds protesting but not being behaving violently. And people with black clothes on, you can't see what their race is, walking by with hammers. And they just walked by and smashed windows. And yeah, the crowd goes in. There were provocateurs doing that just like there were J6. I think I knew who, the, who was paying for it. I think it was Alex Soros, some of your stories. Then the crisis is, of course, the election. A year ago, a year ago, is today the third? Today, I bring this up because a year ago today, the DHS issued a report that I have to upload this on mine. called Captain Byrne was right again. The report says these machines are junk. The report says there's nine different ways they can be hacked. They can be hacked nine ways for Sunday. Sure is broken. This way, they can be hacked way. This isn't secure, that isn't secure, the other isn't secure, none of this is secure. You know, it goes on and on. And even if you have physical access, you can have administrator privileges, which doesn't do anything. And, well, there's all kinds of ways into these machines. The DHS a year ago, the same guys who said most secure election in history came out and said this stuff is. Cluster shit. <laughs> There was a, an opportunity to actually investigate one and only one hard drive in America, Mesa County, Colorado. You can look up this report. We found exactly what we thought we'd find out. These elections are being completely rigged by hidden codes and hidden machines. Sorry. Uh, so that was the crisis, a rigged election. And just so people know, I didn't vote for Donald Trump, didn't vote against him. I'm a lifelong libertarian. I, when he won, I excluded. He's the boss. And it was never a never Trumper. This, for me, I've depicted in the press as some crazy Trumper. Hmm. To me, it wasn't about Donald Trump. I think that we're a nation under attack, and we have got to expose this. The fourth thing is normalization, and of course, you've experienced that as cancer culture. So here are these four things on the right that seem kind of weird. The rigged election. When did we ever hear of shutting down vote counting in the United States in the middle of the night? Never. Let alone six cities. And what do you know? They're the six cities that are the anchor cities of swing states. Is it not? I mean, everything about the election, everything about Antifa, and people taking over city blocks, declaring <laughs> got U.S. rezoned, COVID, you know, censorship in the United States, these random things that are happening that seem so strange, seem like a kaleidoscope, are not strange. They're puzzle pieces and they fit together perfectly, if you understand it, as an offside. It's been managed with military precision against you. So that's the optimistic version of what they're experiencing. Here's the pessimistic version. Here's the pessimistic version. Every genocide that occurs has a certain pan uh, pattern. There's the, people are panicked. 
They, they need to panic people, why? When you're panicked, people no longer think from their frontal cortex, from their frontal lobe. They think like from their amygdala. Your amygdala is your fight or flight. What's up, Crystal? Sorry, I'm trying to... You're thinking from your amygdala. You're not reasoning. And you take herd cues very easily. It's and so they have to panic you with, they got to panic you to get people in that state. I don't know if anyone's had the experience in the last couple of few years of trying to reason with anyone about like, here's some data regarding COVID, or here's some data regarding the injections. And it's like trying to reason with a drowning person. Yeah, you can't because their frontal lobe is not engaged. It's literally they're thinking and they're in panic. They can't follow that data. Uh, tribalization. There's the us and them, the in crowd and the out crowd. You gotta separate them. And there has to be instantly some visual cue. For the Germans, this is how they did it. They said bubonic plague has broken out to the east, and these Jews among us, they have cousins, the Stettel Jews out there in Poland and beyond. And the bubonic plague is gonna come in through them. So we gotta make the Jews here wear yellow stars. So we can see them coming and they can't walk in the sidewalk, they gotta walk in the street, there's gotta be, they gotta, they gotta have some social distancing. So it's about that social distancing. Also the panic and tribalization include anything you can to atomize people. Courtney's always talking about the steps to atomize people. So we had to have our visual cues, be they masks, which are hilarious. All you need to disprove a mask is to take them, put one on and breathe out of fog a glass of water. If you can fog it, you know that there's water vapor there. Hence, the, the virus is in the water vapor. So that's all it should take to demonstrate to someone that the cloth mask didn't work. But it's like, again, reasoning with a drowning man. Try to get them to follow that. It's really been kind of, it's funny what, dealing with hypnotized people. And you just have to treat them with love. And someday they'll be out of their cult and we have to welcome them and not mock them and make fun of them for having been in the cult. cult let's remember. So there's the tribalization, demonization, that was the stage where you were hearing, it's the pandemic of the unvaccinated and all this hate. Anyone who understood anything knew that it was never a bad, bad package of vaccine being unvaccinated. And it is now clearly overwhelmingly become a, bad, a pandemic of vaccine. <laughs> but it was a lie when he said it, incidentally. And when he said it is also when he started using that dark language about, it was the same month Trudeau started saying this crazy stuff up in Canada about these people who are against vaccines are often there, the misogynists and the racists and the this and the French that. minority. And at some point society is going to decide, have to decide how long do we put up with them among us. Primary, Prime Minister of Canada said that. At the same time, or a month later, Biden was saying this stuff, I call it Sniffy Hitler. <clears throat> the Philadelphia was up with the red and the black behind him. Saying, you know, this is Ultra this pandemic of unmet, this is going to be a winter of despair, of death, and this and that and the other thing. That was, we can't let them normalize what they did. They're trying to act normal now. But we have to, somebody in the media should be taking clips of what they were saying two years ago. They rarely, really bear their facts. They really show us who they are. And last is the genocide. So this is how genocides develop. It's this othering. It's this othering that's reinforced and reinforced and then it's their fault and then genocide. How that has to, so just understand that if that occurs, the bad guys win. That's why there can't be talk of anything to do with violence. The biggest surprise we brought to this game, I can tell you, they've told me, the government has told me, is that we stayed calm. No one was prepared that we were gonna stay peaceful. No one was prepared that we were not gonna, they had plans for everything but that. That's what had us really shocked. And then, uh, who's behind it? If you really want to read up on this, here's three things you can read. One is a book by two Chinese colonels. The book just got the text. Oh. Restricted warfare. It's about how two tigers cannot live on one mountain, and eventually we're going to have to take down the United States. And then there's a there's a book called a uh, Hundred Year Marathon, a very detailed book about a plan. It turns out they came in 1949 with a plan to take us out in 100 years by 2049. In 2010, they accelerated to 2030. They now think they're in 2028 when they're gonna be occupied. How it happens is that like every, every Chinese, every home in America already has a deed issued for it in China. 
there is some Chinese colonel or general or something who already owns the deed to your house, and the Chinese version. And he looks it up on Google Earth. It's up Jay Jones. He's the new. Is it two months ago when I met Jay Jones? In, thanks you for it. You're but there at the cabin. Maybe when the dust settles, that's theirs. And how it's going to happen is we get into civil war. Well, the, 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 in the middle, there's a speech by the Chinese Minister of Defense, Chu Haotian. He retired in 03. It's the highest level leak in Chinese history. In his speech, which leaked in 08, Pet he describes how they're going to hit the U.S. with a bioweapon, destabilize us. We go into crisis, civil war starts. Within one year of civil war, 90% of us die. That's been modeled out in the national security service. That happens because the supply chain collapsed. There's a wonderful book about it called One Second After. And you can read this novel, and it's about what happened. But it, it was a novel written to convey these learnings. We die from supply chain collapse. Mm. Uh, food, food, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, but that's not going to happen. And it's not going to happen. There is a way out of this. I see more daylight than I've seen in two and a half years. I see a lot of daylight. We're going to keep calm. If we get violent, if they make us get violent, and they're trying to provoke us, and July 4th, they're going to come at us with a whole bunch of, so I'm as tolerant as the next guy. I'm unlike other people on <laughs> our side, who I don't care about LGBT at all. But somebody, I'm from Vermont. Somebody does. <laughs> I get now why it's problematic to tease. And of course, anybody rolling around, and people who want to roll around in the lingerie with your children, they're going to be very aggressive and try to provoke. And their army is too late. Anti -fight. This is what they're bringing to July 4th. They're trying to provoke you. Everyone's got to keep their cool. We have a way through this. We have a real way through this. And uh, so it's it's about. I'll be here about tomorrow too. It's about setting up groups and communities like this. And we just have to remain Sorry. committed. My point is that we never can lose this deal. And what they're trying to do is take this deal from us. One way or another, they're trying to take our sovereignty to a place where we can never vote it back. If you have one world government, as Mark Stein says, if you have one world government, where do you move if you don't like your government, if you don't like the way it comes? There's nowhere to move. What they're trying to do is by helping crook and legalistic Philadelphia lawyer maneuver, get our sovereignty away from us. And one of those steps is rigging elections. Remember the most basic thing, if we care about consent of the government, how do we know what our consent is that we, the government, consent to? We hold elections that are free, fair, transparent. I don't have to spend any time anymore in America. 70, according to Rasmussen, 74% of Americans now agree with me. They see that our elections are hopelessly, they're terrible. They're mm -hmm. the worse than the third world. So, <laughs> Either we're going to go down this path to genocide. You're welcome, sir. Or we're going to remember what Frederick Douglass said. He gave us the North Star. The thing we can never give up is this deal, the consent of the government, and fixing that. And what that means is elections. It means stopping this move towards okay. international confederacy and surrendering our sovereignty. And medical sovereignty. I'm and better angled here. moral sovereignty. Sweet spot. Uh, so... Okay, what an honor it is to be here at the first of what I'm sure will be many calls call events. Yay! Hey. Hey. Sorry, I did this one late. I was out with the uh, answer to